Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day as well. Today is Happy, happy Mother's Day. And I hope that you all at least got a phone call or a message or a visit later from your children. And uh, if your husband hasn't made you feel special as well, then we, we need to step up a bit. Hey? The watchword for today is from Psalm 66, verse 20. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Today is Rogata Sunday. It's about prayer. It's all about prayer today. This gift from God that we sometimes or often neglect, but that we deeply, deeply need. Before we sing the first song, I'd like to share a few announcements. The collection last Sunday for church music of Nelksa came to 9,931 rand, and today the collection is for our own congregation. We will be celebrating communion, and if there's any one of you who'd like to celebrate communion in your pews but haven't gotten one of those prepackaged cups, just raise your hand now and Andrew will hand one to you. Have a look at the services coming up. This, um, on the 18th, we're celebrating Himmelfahrt, Ascension, and that will take place in Harburg at 6 o'clock. So the Ascension service this week, this coming week on the 18th at 6 p.m. Um, next Sunday there will be a, a German service here, an English contemporary, and the next Sunday as well, and we'll have another e evening traditional service on the 28th. Is Ansa here? Not here today. She has a birthday today. But we all can congratulate her uh, later. Right, there are a few announcements at the back of your pamphlets. So just before I carry on, you need this book, the New Hanover Hymn Book, and your pamphlet for the liturgy. And there are Bratwurst or Burewurst available for sale. Was it only the Burewurst? Biltong? Okay. I mean, Biltong is finished. It's on the announcements, but it was sold out now in this, during this week. So that's finished. But the Bratwurst is available in the hall after the service. Please have a look at all the, the home groups that are meeting this week. Grief Share meets on Tuesdays as well. Um, on Wednesday, the, the, there will be Abendmahl and Communion in Altenheim. And yeah, I think that's it. We celebrate the service in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. That's song number 62, not the page number, it's song number 62.
Let us come before God and bring Him our week, our last month, and our sins. Let us confess them before Him in silent prayer. Lord, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and in deed. We have sinned against you, but also against our brothers and our sisters. Lord, Heavenly Father, please forgive us our sin and wash us clean. Grant us the courage to ask for forgiveness where needed, but also to forgive as you have forgiven us. Lord, we are truly sorry, and we come to you. Have mercy on us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In the presence of our Lord, the Holy God, I ask each one of you, do you confess that you have sinned, and do you regret these sins? Then answer yes. Yes. Do you want God to forgive you in the name of Jesus Christ? Then answer yes. Yes. Are you prepared to forgive those who sinned against you just as God forgives you? Then answer yes. Yes. As you believe, so it shall happen to you. The Almighty God has mercy on you. Empowered by the order the Lord gave to His church, I proclaim to you the forgiveness of sins. Your sins are forgiven in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First John 1 verse 9 says this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray with words from Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Amen.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you as we are today with everything that we carry within us, the good and the bad. Lord, every single one of us comes to you with the strengths and the abilities and talents that you've given us, but also our weaknesses, our selfishness, our brokenness. And Lord, we want to meet with you today. We need your strength. We need your healing, your hope, your help. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The epistle reading for today comes from the first letter of Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. I urge you, then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases our Saviour, our God and Saviour, who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all men. Here ends the epistle reading. Please be seated. I am going to go out with the children to Children's Church, and in the meantime, uh, I invite you to sing Commit the Ways You Travel.
The Gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 5 to 13. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, that, I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is a, f- a friend, yet because of the man's go- boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and, you'll, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here ends the Gospel reading. Let us confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the realm of the dead. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you open our hearts and our souls so that we may truly hear and listen and live what we hear. In Jesus' name, Amen. So today is Rogata Sunday, it's all about prayer, and we've already prayed a few times in the service, later after the ser- sermon and the song after that we'll have the church prayer, which is the main prayer, but prayer has been with us since we've been small, and especially for everyone who's been raised in the church. I think some of my fondest memories of prayer were listening to my grandfather's deep voice, Uh, going through the andacht in the evening after supper or in the morning. I didn't understand much of what he said because it was really Hochdeutsch, but I know that this was a time where we came together and other than the devotion, I didn't really understand. The prayer meant a lot, just being together. It always was a reassurance. How is your prayer time going? Mine goes through ups and downs sometimes. Uh, I think like everyone, when you're, when you're feeling good and everything's well, a prayer time can be really good. Or we forget about it when we're busy. And we leave it. We're vernachlässig. We neglect it sometimes. Sometimes we're in a point in our life where we feel so far away from God or even angry with Him that we don't want to pray or don't know what to pray or just so empty that we don't know how to reconnect with God. And prayer is connecting with God. It's spending time with Him. And prayer is something that God has given us. And we need it. First Timothy, we heard the epistle reading, First Timothy 2. Um, it's actually so interesting. I like looking into the background a little bit, not just reading it, Timothy was a young Christian. He was the first generation born as a Christian. So his mother and his grandmother converted to Christianity, and he was born as a Christian. And his father was a Greek, and so he wasn't circumcised. He wasn't a Hebrew. He wasn't a Jew. He really was the first Christian born outside of this Judaic um, life or worldview into Christianity. And he was a timid person. He wasn't a a very dominant bull in a china cabinet personality like the Apostle Paul was. But he ended up being, as we described it in the Bible study on Thursday, his sidekick. He was Paul's sidekick on his missionary journeys. Paul took him under his wing, his mentor, and Timothy went with him on his journeys. And they preached and they taught and and even did miraculous wonders on these journeys. And on these journeys, he also learned from Paul the gospel and about Jesus and how we're saved through faith by grace and the power of Jesus and the power of prayer. But on his fourth journey, Paul then, this was the last one. Remember, the first one was quite short. It just sort of went into Asia, um, what was, I think, Turkey now. And then the, other, the next two were the ones where he established uh, Corinth and Thessalonica and all of these places. And Timothy was with him. And on the fourth one, Paul's journey was just down to Jerusalem. And he knew that he was going to be arrested. There was even a prophet who told him, warned him, took Paul's belt off and tied his hands with it and said, in this way you will be led off. Paul knew that he had to go and do it. That is quite something. And on the way, he told Timothy, I want you to take care of the church in Ephesus. I want you to be the pastor of that congregation, in essence. A young guy in in charge of this congregation. And he had a lot of trouble there. He had a difficult time, especially also being a timid person. And there were dominant personalities in the congregation who kind of steamrolled him, and there were people who had very different views on things. So the letters to Timothy, 1 and 2, and also Titus we call pastoral letters. 
because Paul gives Timothy instructions on how to pastor the congregation. Uh, how, how should the congregation be, be led? How does he need to deal with things? For example, he, he instructed him how to deal with false teachers. There were people coming who still taught that you had to first become a Jew before you came, became a Christian. You had to be good, you had to follow the law before you could become a follower of Jesus, which is false. And they, they kept coming and disrupting people, confusing people, because they didn't have a, a New Testament. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have our, the church laws or, the, or confessions and all of these things. So this is so important, these letters to Timothy. So it teaches them how to deal with um, the overseers and the deacons. How, how should they act or be? Um, also talks about how the worship services should be de dealt with. And in chapter 2, he begins with these instructions. And the first thing he instructs him when it comes to worship or the life of, a, of Christianity, of the, the community, is prayer. I want to read that again, 1 Timothy 2. And listen carefully to what Paul says here. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people, this has now been witnessed to at the proper time. So Paul instructs him on four different elements of prayer. Okay? There's, there was intercession, prayers, um, petitions, or in, petitions, prayer, intercession, and then also thanksgiving. Petitions are prayers for your own needs. I had to check that with the, with the Greek word there behind that. It can be just named as prayer. We know petitions as these lists that we sign in protest to something or on behalf of someone. But here, it's a prayer for your own needs. Lord, I don't know where, how I'm going to get through to the end of the month. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to pay these wages. Lord, I need help with family. The prayers is just the general word for prayer. God, it pleases God when we come to Him with prayer. To meet with Him in trust. Intercession is praying on behalf of someone else. Interceding for them. You cannot intercede for yourself. Um, you, you have to intercede for others. It can be for your spouse. It can be for a family member. It can also be for the country. And we see from the text that God wants us to pray for, Grandma Pause, He wants us to pray for our leaders. He wants us to pray for the world. So that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. That's quite hard. I think every single one of us prays for this country. And yet sometimes we ask, Lord, where are you? And I want to get back to that at the end. The last one is thanksgiving. God knows what we need. I, I love it so often. He's very simple. The instructions are simple because he knows that we like to make things complicated. And he just says, give thanks. It's very difficult giving thanks when we don't want to. When we are overwhelmed or angry or upset or hurt or not in a good place. But God knows that we need it, especially when we don't want to. Because immediately we are forced to look outside of ourselves and onto Him. And I don't know if you noticed, but there were, there were four instructions. Only one of them is praying for yourself. The other three are 
completely outside of ourselves, praying for others, praying for the people around you, praying for the church, praying for your leaders, giving thanks to God, looking to God. I think as, as humans, we don't have an issue looking at ourselves. And God knows that. And that's why thankfulness is so important. Now, all of these instructions are wonderful. But how do we do it? How do we start when we don't know? Or not in a good place? And the answer there is also quite simple. You just ask God for help. If you're in a place where you don't know what to say, you don't, it's just turmoil. You don't have to say a word. The Holy Spirit intercedes for you, knows what you feel, what you think, everything that you've experienced. And you can just go for a walk and say one prayer every day. Lord, help me. But it's the repetition of doing that. And coming to Him every day, even if it's five minutes. Lord, teach me. Lord, teach me. Lord, help me. I've had to do that many times. What's helped me also is, um, is it Jeremiah 29? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. That has always been a help for me to come back to God. When you don't know what to do anymore, when when life is beyond you, you've tried, it's beyond, you pour in all your strength, and it still doesn't come right. When you are at an end of yourself, to say, Lord, I'm I'm just going to throw this into your court. I I don't know what to do. I'm going to trust you. And it says... He will make your paths straight. How wonderful is that? Because when we come to God, He's not angry. When we come back to Him, He rejoices. He's so happy when we come back to Him. That's what He wants. Jesus died on the cross so that God can have a relationship with you. That you can know His love and He can comfort you, encourage you, lift you up, teach you, challenge you. And where does that happen the best is when we actually give Him time and listen. Yo, but it can be difficult. I know. The one thing that by prayer that that we mustn't forget is that it's not just about our lives and our feelings and how we are doing. There's a spiritual component to this. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the authorities and kingdoms of, of evil. That is our struggle, not against the people around us. And an eye-opening passage for me is from Daniel chapter 10. That was quite an eye-opener. I want, I want to read some of it for you. So, Daniel writes this down. On the 24th day of the first month, I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris. I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Ufaz around his waist. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling to my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, I have now been sent to you. 
Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. This is interesting. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. And then there was one who looked like a man. He touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid. You who are highly esteemed, he said, peace, be strong now, be strong. And when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. So he said, do you know why I have come? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia, and when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. What was going on here? Have you ever heard that one? Have you ever read that passage? Daniel had received a vision from God, and he didn't know what to make of it. And he asked God, please explain this to me. And at three weeks later, he was visited by an, a, an angel, probably Gabriel, is the messenger Gabriel. And he's so overwhelmed. The people around him don't see it, but they're they flee because they've, uh, they're just filled with terror. And he is basically helpless and c cannot even get up. And he says that I, from the day that you prayed, your prayer was heard in heaven and I was sent to come to you. God immediately heard his prayer. But then he says that the prince of Persia detained me. What is going on? But, the, but Michael, one of the chief princes, that's the archangel Michael. So there was an evil prince or angel, I guess, one of the fallen angels, I don't know, detained Gabriel. This is not something we normally think about. And then someone who looked like a man came and touched him. And as he spoke, gave him strength. Now, who could that be? I wonder. If not Jesus. As Jesus spoke, he was strengthened. Our prayers are not just about this life now. What we can see and touch. It's not about the people we can shake hands with or greet. It is about the realm, the spiritual realm. And God wants us to pray. And I love this passage because it teaches us that nothing can stop our prayers. And First Timothy teaches us that our prayers affect also this realm and the spiritual. Why did God give us prayer? He can do everything on his own. Why does he need us to pray for it? I think because he wants us to see, to be a part of what he's doing. Because if we never pray and ask for it, we won't see what he's doing. And now I want to come back to a question I posed at the beginning. We pray for the country, we pray for our family, we pray for each other, we pray for our friends, we pray for everyone around us, we, we pray and pray and pray. But often, it seems that there is no answer. I want to ask you, and it's a rhetorical question, 
if you have to honestly look inside yourself when you, when you pray, do you believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that God hears you and that He answers prayer? Do you believe that? That's a tough question. I think I'll end there. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, <laughs> we, we're a complicated people and yet we're so small. We just don't understand things. Um, we cannot comprehend who you are. We cannot compre even really comprehend the spiritual realm. We even struggle to comprehend our realm here and what's going on in our own lives. And yet you want us to be your children and you want us to work with you, to serve you, to pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, on the one hand, we, are, we stand in awe of this gift and responsibility, but we also come to you and ask for your help in our lives, in, in our relationships, but especially in our relationship with you. Lord, teach us to pray. I pray for those overwhelmed with worries, that you help them to put them aside five minutes a day to be able to pray. I pray for those who are overwhelmed with guilt or anger or hurt. For those who are filled with doubt. For every single one of us. Lord, help us to come to you and to pray every day. We pray for healing and strength and hope. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God that is higher than, greater than any human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, every good and gracious gift comes from you. Heavenly Father, we give to you this offering with a thankful heart and in trust. May this offering be a blessing to the building of your kingdom here in our area. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you truly are amazing. You care about us and what happens to us on this little planet. You created us and you also had a plan for us from the beginning. You knew that we would fall into temptation and sin. You knew all along how weak and selfish and prideful we are. We hurt each other as human beings over and over again, and yet you chose to love us unconditionally. You chose to be born as one of us. You chose to show us your love and have mercy on us. You chose to die on the cross. You chose to take all the punishment we deserved for our shameful thoughts, words, and deeds when you died on the cross. You chose to share your victory of life righteousness, and an intimate relationship with the Father. How can we ever, ever praise you enough, love you enough? God in heaven, we praise you. We magnify you. Who can compare to you? There is no one like you. You are beyond words. You are love. You are spirit. You are good and faithful and merciful and compassionate. You are patient. You are righteous and holy. Heavenly Father, we not only praise you, but we also come to you as your children. And we ask that you help us to be good ambassadors of who you are to others. Fill us with your deep and unconditional love towards others. Help us to cross boundaries and to go where you go. Help those in our midst who are grieving, lonely, or overwhelmed with help, hopelessness. We pray for the marriages in our congregation. Teach us to see the other, to love and cherish the other. Protect our children, and Lord, we pray, heal our land. We pray for our president. We pray for our leaders, Lord Jesus, that you bless them, bless them with goodness and honesty. Bless them with compassion and mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray not just for our country, but for this world, Lord Jesus. There are so many people who are in power, who are power hungry, who are playing games with the world. We pray that your will be done. We pray for peace and healing. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing together, Create in me, God, a clean heart. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts on high. Lift 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly fitting and right and for our lasting good that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you have sent as Savior of the world, that through his death we may have forgiveness of sins and by his resurrection life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink from it, all of you. This is my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Everything is prepared. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good.
Destillat für dich gegeben. Please join hands as a symbol of fellowship. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith to everlasting life. Go in the peace of the Lord. Amen. I want to ask all those who are sharing in communion in their seats, if you haven't done so already, to join us in this round. And I speak to each of you, the body of Christ has been broken for you, the blood of Christ has been shed for you. Please join hands as a symbol of fellowship. John 14 verse 27 says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, and I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith to everlasting life. Go in the peace of the Lord. Amen.
the Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have given us. None of us are worthy. And yet you say, come. To receive forgiveness, renewed mercy. How could we ever thank you enough? In Jesus' name, amen. Go in the peace of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you. Be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. We sing the closing hymn, Be Still and Know.